unfortunately our time here has come to the end. Time to start the long journey home from Croatia to Slovenia to Austria to Germany to Belgium, might go through Luxembourg, then to France, then the UK, then Wales. Looking forward to getting back on the road. First travel stop in Slovenia, didn't actually mean to stop here, we just needed to stop to buy a vignette. So I thought I might as well plug in for a minute while I have a pee. Uh, I think we've done about 50 or 60 miles, um, still on like 70% charge. That's basically how the feature will be, there will just be service station um, charges in like every service station. And to be fair, like in Slovenia it's pretty good, they're, they're kind of charges everywhere. Hands getting cold holding the camera, it's about minus 4 at the moment, so we're gonna get a crack on. Okay, this is the first proper charging stop in Slovenia, and the last because on the next leg of the trip, we're going to be entering Austria. So we drove 90 miles to get here, and we had about 25% left, but we did stop for a quick six minute uh, charge. All these units in Slovenia are on the petrol network, which we activated using the One Charge app. That uh, has actually been really good, really reliable. The next charging stops by a lake in Germany. So we'll take Bailey out and take him for a little, a little run around the lake. All right, how you doing, Amy? Nearly ready to go? Yes. The Christmas tree. Amy's the Christmas tree. Amy's fixing the Christmas tree. Nice. All right. Let's it's get. Scary, it feels like. It's yeah. Hard. I'm really looking forward to going through Austria. Like, it's going to be so cool to go through all this past all the snowy mountains. off to go to this park which I thought would be quite nice because it's next to the lake and we could have taken Bailey out for a little um a little stroll and the photo on Plugshare showed that there was a Chadamo and a CCS unit but unfortunately the unit's been swapped out for a dual CCS unit with no Chadamo. Plugshare was wrong um so it looks like we could we could charge here using the slow chargers but we we want a rapid so we're going to carry on 37 miles remaining and there's an Ionity station in 11 miles time. So let's go there. Successfully made it to this Ionity uh, rapid charger and it's pretty cool. Just like in France, Ionity here in Austria also has provision for Chadamo and AC. So we're able to charge as usual at Ionity have been very reliable. Um, I think we got here, that was another like 80, 85 mile leg. We got here with about 17% remaining. So beautiful driving, driving for Austria here. Really enjoying it. Pocket coffee. These things were amazing. They combine my two favorite things, espresso coffee and dark chocolate. It's basically uh, a little square of dark chocolate with a liquid espresso coffee center. Really, really tasty. Highly recommended. Wish we could get them in the UK. Bought this one in Austria. Also seen them for sale in Italy. Turns out they're made in Spain. Successfully made it into Germany. That's the fourth country we've passed through today. Busy traffic in Germany. It's a Sunday today, which is great, which means there's been no lorries on the road in any of the countries we've passed through, which has been really cool. I know it's the case in France, but I think it must also be the case in like Austria, Slovenia, Croatia and Germany, where lorries are banned from driving on the motorways. Um, 
on Sunday. We're charging here from this AC charge point where we're going to spend the night tonight. Nice and quiet. It's just by a, a sports um, sort of like running track, which should be nice and quiet. It's a lit car park, totally empty here. Perfect spot to uh, spend the night. So here we have uh, this is on the this is an Eon charge point. Activate using it using the Eon app. Um, could also have used a uh, charge map or shell me motion, I think. It's pretty chilly out here. Kind of below, temperatures below freezing, hovering around zero degrees. So very glad of having the heating heating on tonight. So we'll be able to leave fully charged tomorrow. Um, yeah, make some good progress through Germany. So we've done almost 400 miles today. So it's been quite a good, you know, quite a good driving day for us. Good morning. So making good progress, driving down through, up through Germany. We're currently near Stuttgart. So drove about 18 miles after our stop last night, um, after breakfast. We're now, yeah, near Stuttgart, plugged into this Eon Drive rapid charger. There's a Hyundai uh, Tuscan plug-in hybrid charging on AC, but we could still use Chalmo and uh, charge on DC. So I'm just gonna have a quick stop here. Take Bailey out for a little walk. This way. Look, it's Emerson's. Oh, we're back in the van, warming up after playing around in the snow. You enjoyed that, didn't you, Bailey? Pretty chilly, so we've got the heating on in the van, and we've just made a hot chocolate on the induction hob. So, warmed up some oat milk on the hob, and then uh, put a bit of dark chocolate, and then dropped in one of these pocket coffees. And it's just, oh, it's the, it's the best, it's the best thing ever. There's also a bit of cinnamon and mm. turmeric that's probably been overshadowed what? by uh, espressiness. <laughs> no, I can taste, I can taste the turmeric. It's pretty nice. good. Cool, mm. all right, let's get on the road. There's quite a lot of congestion on the motorway, so um, to take the exit, which we're going to go to a rapid charge on the motorway, it would have taken too long. So, um, yeah, we've had a quick look to see what else was around, and there was an Aldi here which has got a free, free upper charger. This is the first free rapid charger of the trip. Um, in general, I don't think rapid chargers, I don't think that's a good idea if they're free, because they're usually hogged for ages. But anyway, this one happens to be free. And we remembered, we came here in 2018. So um, yeah, happy days. We actually need to do a bit of shopping anyway. So <clears throat> we're currently rapid charging here in Germany. Uh, this is the last rapid charge of the day before we enter Luxembourg, where we're going to spend the night. And uh, typically on the last rapid charge of the day, we've had our first problem of the day. I used the new motion RFID to start the charge. Um, they've now been called shell recharge and that worked totally fine. But when I go to stop the charge, it's not accepting the card to stop it. So we're kind of stuck to the charger. So there's two ways that, that I've used in the past to stop, stop a charger when you're stuck to it. One of them is to set an 80% limit on the van, which uh, then if you're above 80%, it stops the charge. However, since we upgraded the battery, the 40 kilowatt hour battery doesn't have a charge limit, so the charge limiter doesn't work. And either way, it's just to press the emergency, emergency stop button on the charger. Unfortunately, this charger doesn't have an emergency stop button. So it's a bit annoying, there's no way to stop the charge from inside the car. Um, I know a lot of uh, newer EVs have like a you know, stop charge button which you can press. Um, I was thinking, what do I do to try and stop this? I mean, I could try and call um, I guess shell recharge support, but I very much doubt I'll be able to get through to anyone. Remember, we've got OVMS installed in the van, which I use a lot to check the state of charge remotely and to start the sort of heating and remote climate um, uh, via the mobile network. Um, and I've just been reading that the latest version of OVMS has a feature 
um, to uh, enable the charge to be stopped remotely from OVMS. And now I'm just updating OVMS to the latest version. If I was at home, OVMS would just update automatically because it connects to my home Wi-Fi um, network. Okay, great. Uh, it's now finished. I'm just going to reboot OVMS. And hopefully now it'll have the new feature which will uh, enable me to stop the charge using OVMS. So this is a really cool feature. So I'll be able to set charge limits. So I'll be able to say like from now on, just charge my battery to like to 80% or 70% and then stop. Just like, you know, just like a Tesla or, you know, more advanced EVs. It's, it's a shame that Nissan removed the 80% charge limit. I think it was a real mistake with the 40 kilowatt hour um, vehicles to do that. I am now running the latest version from January the 5th. Excellent, up the uh, OVMS app. And now I should be able to swipe that to the left to stop the charge. <laughs> and if by magic the charge has stopped, that's really saved the day. <laughs> right, let's go onwards to Luxembourg. Because these Chalamo connectors, they, they lock they lock into place when um, when the charge is active. So there's no way to physically unplug it. Anyway, at least we've got plenty of range. We've charged much more than I intended to. Looks like we've got about 130 miles to do a 70 mile journey. We're just about to cross into Luxembourg and there's a lot of snow by the side of the road. Crazy, and it's minus four degrees, so pretty chilly. Just goes to show you don't need to go to the Alps to get snow. Well, hey, we've made it to Luxembourg. And wow, what an amazing charging location this is. Um, there's 14 of these units here in this, uh, in this car park in Luxembourg. We're plugged into this one here, charging. A really nice screen on it by a company called Chargy. Not seen these before. Um, activated this one using a new motion RFID, but it looks like you can also use contactless credit or debit card. I'm gonna go inside and uh, cook some dinner. Mmm, smells super tasty, Amy. Thanks. What are we having for dinner tonight? <laughs> Spinach balls. Spinach balls? Balls? Oh, balls of spinach? Tomato sauce. Whoa. All the extra spinners just to they look amazing. Boot. I don't know how many. <laughs> look at oh, that's a generously sized ball. Good morning from cold, frosty and foggy Luxembourg. So Luxembourg may seem like a bit of a strange place to go, but it's actually directly on the route between Austria and Calais. And we actually know this bit of Luxembourg reasonably well, because there's a climbing area here called Berndorf. That we've been here before. And we're not coming climbing this time. It's way too cold for that but we need to get Bailey his um, worming tablet and get his documentation signed off. We know the vets here in Luxembourg. There's quite a good vet to get that done. Um, Last time we were at this lake, it was so hot, it was too hot for a run, too hot to climb. So we came here for a swim. Luxembourg is actually quite a, it's actually quite a rural country. I mean, it's famous, it's well known for its financial districts and Luxembourg city but the area surrounding that is actually really nice
So we've had this van almost four years now, um, but I've just discovered a feature that it has that I didn't know about before. So the, <clears throat> the night before we were due to leave on this trip, late in the evening I went to turn it around just so I could like plug it in to charge it up before the trip. And uh, I'd forgotten to like preheat it to like melt all the ice off the windscreen. It was like deeply frozen, thick layer of ice all over the screen. Um, so I just got in the van and I just you know, turned everything on, turned, mashed all the buttons here to like turn the heat up to full, put it up onto the screen. Um, and after like, you know, 30 seconds or so, the screen started to melt. But I also noticed the mirrors were like, there was steam coming off the mirrors and the ice that, that were, was on the side mirrors here was starting to um, melt. And I was like, wow, it's got heated mirrors. And I'd, what, I'd, what I'd done is I'd pressed this button here which is labeled rear, rear screen defrost. And I've always thought this button here did, you know, did nothing in our van because we haven't got a rear screen. I assumed that it was just like, you know, you know a leftover button from the Avalia version of this van that has got a rear screen. Um, but it turns out that button there does do something in our van. It, it turns on the heat and mirrors. And actually it's been pretty useful this trip because we've done quite a bit of driving in like freezing fog which tends to like condensate on the mirrors and then like yeah, you get like a thin layer of frost filming as you're driving. Quickly melts any ice that's off the mirror like really quickly. They're really, really powerful and they're even like warm to touch. So we've just stopped that little here because we want to do a little bit of a uh, little bit of food shopping, and there is a rapid charger here, but unfortunately it's a Tesla Model Three charging on CCS, so we can't use DC Chalamo charging. Um, but we want to have a bit of lunch here anyway, so we'll probably be here for a while. So we just thought second we'd lunch. just um, <laughs> yeah, a bit of a second lunch. Um, we would plug in on. So I've plugged into the AC side using my cut down cable trick. Um, so we're getting six kilowatts. Um, charging there on AC. So he's going to cook him a bit of lunch and probably the Tesla driver will come back in a minute from doing his shop. We'll jump on Chanamo. So I probably should explain my cut down cable trick I just mentioned. Um, so AC tethered, tethered AC on the on rapid chargers is a tethered type 2 cable. Now our van, um, the EMV 200, only has a type 1 AC socket so I can't plug the AC straight into the van but, but what I can do is plug the tethered AC cable into the end of our type 1 to type 2 you know AC charging cable and then plug the other type 1 end into the van but what happens with that is the, 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 the pins don't quite meet up so to make that work I had to chop off about 10 millimeters off the end of the um, charge point to end of my type 1 to type 2 cable um, the cable still works in other charge points, but it doesn't lock into place anymore, which can actually be a bit of an advantage sometimes, so you don't get your cable uh, cable stuck. Um, but it still works fine in other charge points. All the safety connections, the pilot signal and everything, they're all still going through as, um, as if the cable was like one straight line. So it's not a particularly dangerous thing to do, um, but I wouldn't recommend people do it much here after lunch. Well, your parents kind of gave us some crackers, perfect with cheese. And These are very us. well travelled crackers. <laughs> They're Christmas present for my parents and they've been all the way to uh, Croatia and back. I'm amazed we haven't opened them, opened uh, them before my now. My parents gave us some fig and <laughs> balsamic chutney. Amazing. Okay, so the Model 3 has gone now. So we're plugged into Chalamo, been into the shop, done some shopping, and now we're ready to go. 90%. Thank you, Little, for a nice free charge. Stop. Charging is stopping. Perfect. Final rapid charge of the day. We're nearly on the North Belgian coast. Since we left Croatia over the last sort of two and a half days, so today's been a half day because we went for a run this morning and took Bay to the vet, we have done a total of 860 miles. Drive, driving back, the weather's been a lot better than driving down. Been getting better economy. Been averaging like almost three kilowatt hours today. Um, but compared to when we were driving down when it was like zero or below the entire way and um, getting more like 2.4, 2.5, maybe 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour. 
Good morning from the north coast of Belgium. It stopped drizzling this morning, so we're going to go for a little walk, but this is where we stayed last night um, on this uh, destination AC charge point in this nature reserve. And uh, yeah, go check out the beach. This is the sign for the beach. Looks like you'd have to play frisbee, Bailey, if you want to go on this beach. It's a beautiful morning here in Calais. We're here in the Eurotunnel, nice and early. Checked in, as, uh, as we anticipated, it's pretty quiet because the UK, um, uh, UK citizens still cannot travel to, uh, to France for um, you know, tourist reasons or anything. France has still closed its borders to the UK pretty much due to COVID-19. But because we're coming back from uh, you know, like a green list country leading Croatia and we're traveling back to the UK, we can take the Eurotunnel. So we're just charging here on, uh, on Chatamo. This is a new unit actually. There used to be an old uh, DBT unit here, but it's recently been replaced with this uh, EB box unit. Um, it's a free charge, activated it using charge map uh, RFID. And that unit there, that's been replaced um, fairly recently as well. Probably could do with a few more, um, you know, Chadabo and TCS units to uh, compete with the uh, Tesla superchargers over there. Checked Bailey in, scanned his microchip. <laughs> you happy to be going home, Bailey? Well, no, I had to carry him in like a baby. It's always nice to go home, but yeah. it's a bit sad that trip's coming to an end. I'm sad if it's not going to be nice weather. We've kind of got used to not having any rain. It's either been snow or mist or sun. Yeah, we've had lots of cold temperatures, but very little rain. We've got the carriage to ourselves. Bailey gets to run around on the train. You're on the train, Bailey. Underground, under the sea. Back to the UK. I love tunnel crossing. Such a, such a great way to travel. 100% electric train under the sea. It's awesome. So much better than a ferry. It takes like 30 minutes instead of many hours and we get to have Bailey with us. So I think this is where we're going to end, end the video. I don't think you'll want to see us driving 300 miles across the UK, back to Wales. It's rather boring. We'll just be stopping at a few charges, getting a PCR test. Um, that's about it. And the UK has so many charges, it's not particularly interesting watching us use them. But maybe, maybe we'll video something if something doesn't work, but to be honest, that's pretty rare. Nearly home, back to North Wales. The sun has just set over the mountains as we're coming into, uh, coming into North Wales. It's a beautiful sight. We've had a lovely drive back through, back through Wales, caught the last of the sun. But just thought I'd mention that our total trip, uh, total mileage for the trip is uh, 3,080 miles, probably about 3,090 once we're finally, once we're finally home. So yeah, little band's done us proud all the way to Croatia and back. Thanks a lot for coming along with us and uh, hope that gave you a taste of what it's like to drive an electric camper van through, uh, through Europe in winter. Thank you for watching.